When we launch TopoDrive, it will appear in a new web browser window and will look like this. The white region is the model display area and we want to make sure that it is fully visible. If it's not fully visible, we can adjust the browser window size or use the zoom buttons. We can zoom out or zoom in. To begin creating a model, click the Start button and enter the horizontal length of the aquifer in meters. We'll set it to 1,000 meters. The vertical exaggeration should be set to 1 so that the horizontal and vertical scales are the same and the display is not distorted. We now see the no-flow boundaries that form the left side the base and the right side of the aquifer. The horizontal and vertical coordinates of the cursor arrow are shown in the left lower corner and the base of the aquifer has a vertical coordinate or elevation of zero and it serves as our datum for hydraulic head. The next step is to draw the water table. A prompt reminds us to draw the water table from left to right. For this demonstration, we'll draw a water table having a hummocky shape that rises from left to right. Begin by clicking the cursor arrow at the left boundary or just to the left of it and then move to the right, clicking at points to define the water table. Finish drawing the water table by clicking on the right boundary or just to the right of it. And now the boundaries of our model are completely specified. The next step is to create a mesh by specifying the number of rows and columns. Typically somewhere between 50 and 100 columns works well for topo drive. We'll choose 80. In this demonstration, the vertical thickness of the aquifer is significantly less than the horizontal length, so we can use fewer rows than columns. We'll choose 30 rows. The next step is to assign hydraulic properties to the cells in the mesh. For the isotropic case, the properties are hydraulic conductivity in meters per second and porosity in percent. Turbo drive comes with a default set of values, but you can change them. For the anisotropic case, we can separately set the horizontal hydraulic conductivities and the vertical hydraulic conductivities. However, we'll stick with the isotropic case. TopoDrive allows us to set up five sets of property values associated with these five colors. By default, the entire aquifer is homogeneous with the property values associated with the white color. For this demonstration, we will create two zones with contrasting hydraulic conductivities. 
for the first zone, we'll select a higher hydraulic conductivity. And we can define a zone by drawing a polygon. All the cells within the polygon will have the higher hydraulic conductivity. To finish drawing the polygon, double click the last point. To define a second zone, we can click on the properties button again. And this time we'll select a lower hydraulic conductivity. We'll draw this zone here. An alternative way to finish drawing a polygon is to single click the last point and then click the Done Polygon button. The next step is to calculate hydraulic head. TurboDrive will draw head contour lines or equal potential lines at uniform intervals. However, before we do this, we might think about what the head contour lines might look like. Comparing our expectation with the computed result will sharpen our analytical thinking of groundwater flow. Click on the head button and we are asked to select the number of contour intervals. We'll pick 40. Click Compute, and here are our head contour lines making 40 uniform intervals. The head contour lines are not labeled, but it's easy to determine the head values. For each contour line, just follow it to the water table, and the elevation of the water table is the hydraulic head of the contour line. For this contour line, the hydraulic head is 346 meters. Before we go to the next step, we should note several features. For example, contour lines refract or abruptly change directions at the interface between the two zones of contrasting hydraulic conductivities, as can be seen here and along here. Also, in this zone of higher hydraulic conductivity, head contour lines are further apart, whereas in this zone of lower hydraulic conductivity, head contour lines are closer together. Taking note of these features again helps us to sharpen our analytical thinking skills for groundwater flow. For the next step, we'll click the flow button. We can either track flow paths or look at particle movement. Flow paths can be tracked both in the forward and backward directions, forward only or backward only. In this demonstration, we'll use the default setting of tracking flow paths in both directions. We can click at various points in the aquifer to display flow paths that go through these points.
So here is a set of flow lines that travel through various parts of the aquifer. We can note some features of these flow paths. If hydraulic conductivity is isotropic and there's no vertical exaggeration, then flow paths intersect hydraulic head contour lines at right angles. Also, like head contour lines, flow paths refract or make an abrupt turn at the interface between two zones of contrasting hydraulic conductivities. In addition, a zone of higher hydraulic conductivity tends to attract flow lines into the zone, while a zone of lower hydraulic conductivity tends to deflect flow lines to go around the zone. We can animate these flow lines by clicking on the animation button and set the animation speed and smoothness. We'll set the animation speed so that one second of animation time equals 50 days of travel time. If this creates an animation that is too fast or too slow, we can come back and set a different speed. The animation smoothness of 10 frames per second is usually adequate. Clicking the model display region will alternately start and stop the animation. The travel time is shown at the center bottom part of the window. Here we have two flow paths that have entered the high hydraulic conductivity zone. And when they exit, they go around the low hydraulic conductivity zone rather than going through it. The model shows that it takes 1,767 days of travel time for all the flow paths to travel through the aquifer. Finally, we'll go back to the flow button to animate the movement of a group of particles. For the initial particle spacing, we can use somewhere between 1 100th to 1 1,000th of the horizontal length of the aquifer. Let's pick 5 meters. We can use a polygon to define the starting locations of a group of particles. For this demonstration, we'll place this group of particles at the highest elevation and animate their movement. We'll click the animation button again, and this time we'll speed up the animation so that one second of animation time equals 100 days of travel time. Again, we can click anywhere on the model display area to start and stop the animation. We can see particles moving very quickly in the high hydraulic conductivity zone. And then the particles tend to move around the low hydraulic conductivity zone. However, a few particles have actually moved into the low hydraulic conductivity zone. And they will move slowly through the zone, eventually exiting and flowing to the discharge area of the aquifer.
This completes our demonstration of TopoDrive.